Hello, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, and welcome to episode one of Nexus Arcana Campaign One. We're finally here. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Woo! Ah, <laughs> <sighs> so excited to be here. Joining us tonight, we have our cast from Misplaced in Boliv Oblivion once again. We've got uh, Jacob, we've got Bara Buns, we've got Milky Moo, we've got Blaine, and joining us tonight is a very special friend. You might know them as Tabaxi Cafe on Twitter. And ah. joining us very soon, not this week, unfortunately, um, is the ever beloved Leaf. Um, they will be joining us in a couple of episodes from now, but we are excited for them to join us and we're excited to start tonight. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> so <Yeah>. excited. <laughs> As you can see, seated around me at the table, we've got some beautiful new faces, and I can't wait to introduce these awesome new characters in the campaign. So let me just begin. It is the year 1349, in the era of the new dawn. We find ourselves on the planet Ardeum, a unique place crafted by the primordial genies of the elemental plane known as the Kruth Dair. It is a world they created as a haven for spirits and elementals to live in a peaceful coexistence that crosses to the material plane and its inhabitants. To represent the cycle of all things, the planet was shaped in the form of a ring, much like the eternal ring of life to death, darkness to light, and the forces of nature that forever persist across our dam's unique shape. Long after civilizations rise and fall, for long have civilizations been established on its planet. With their ages of technological advancements and dominance, the world has begun to divide into kingdoms of conquered land, from the Golgina Empire on the continent of Solvain to the north, its scorched red earth being habitable primarily by the Ganassi and the Tieflings who could withstand such heat, to the frigid kingdom on the southern continent of Galdrea of Altoris, a kingdom of numerous races bound together by ancient ritualistic practices in the frozen mountains. And now with the arrival of more gods to the great genie's planet, a new kingdom of dragon kind has arisen across the expansive Dremlos desert, led by heroic le lineage of dragonborns known as the Dothrak. With nations on the rise after the struggle of many new species of humanoids arriving in this world, as if from nowhere, integrating with established societies as best they could, or isolating themselves in new communities, we find our story start on the continent of Galdrea. On the northern coast, there exists an archipelago, one where many of these races who had no place to call their home flocked to, and created factions, banding together to survive, not just first on the land, but eventually as mercenaries. With no home to call their own, they made everywhere their home. Wherever they tread was new stomping ground for them to conquer. And wherever there was gold, there was jobs to be done. And this is where we find our heroes, in the heart of the Iron Claw Federation. A shogun state made of independent factions and tribes littered throughout its various mountainscapes and coastal seas and coastal areas, we find a community thriving on contracts that come in from all over the world. With three main known superpowers on this side of the planet, of course, there's jobs to be done in secret and in shadow. This is where we find our hero start. Within Iron Claw proper, home to the clan of Kenku, known as Clan Fiddlesticks. It's about noon. The sun is high in the sky, and it's recruiting day. Here in Iron Claw, we find many of its inhabitants flocking to the main central hall where new recruits, visitors, or traveled mercenaries and adventurers come here looking for work. They are allowed to 
apply themselves with resumes and applicants to Ironclaw itself for the main proper of Ironclaw as it receives these contracts from all over the continent. It dishes them out, creates small parties to go and take care of different jobs. Everything from heist to um, the word excuse me at the moment, getting rid of pests, whatever that word is. <laughs> uh, but these jobs come in in all shapes and sizes. And depending on your skill set and your experience, you will be partied up with like individuals of similar talent, of places that you would work well together with, determined by the Iron Claw Federation. And you will be set out on these quests. An adventurer's guild for mercenaries, you can almost say. Extermination, thank you. <laughs> it's in this office where many adventurers and mercenaries from all over are waiting patiently in line. We find ourselves focusing on our first individual, our first hero, or soon to be hero, standing in line when suddenly in the booth in front of them, the curtain slides open and one of the various other applicants steps out. A voice croons from inside. Next. Beckoning forth to Milky's character. Milky, if you'd like to describe your character. Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm playing Poe. They are a uh, satyr, and I'm playing a homebrew uh, class called um, Chef. Is it called Chef? Cook. Cook. You're a monster <laughs> masher cook. <laughs> yeah, I'm a monster masher cook. Uh, I, I'm, uh, let's see, uh, I'm, like, 5'3", uh, and, uh, yeah. Do you want me to, like, say backstory or just description? Just description's fine for now. Okay. That's it. All right. You hear a scraggly, smaller voice, as if coming from a small creature, beckoning from inside. Next! And they... Tap at their desk. Okay. Poe po walks forward. <laughs> from within this booth, the curtain closes behind you, and you see across from you, seated at a desk with iron bars in front of you with a little mail slot um, where you can slide papers through. There sits on the other side a small crow-like individual humanoid, roughly about four to five feet tall, sitting hunched over, you know, scratching at some of the feathers on its neck when it looks you up and down. <clears throat> it grabs a piece of paper and a writing quill, dips it in its inkwell, and without returning its look up, it begins to scribble down on the piece of paper. Um, and then it looks up at you. Name? Uh, my name is Poe Castion. Cast iron, just surname? Yes, yes, sir. Ma'am. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It looks down and keeps writing. It looks back up. Occupation? Oh, I'm, I'm a very qualified chef. A chef? Here in Ironclaw. We don't get many of your coin. You're going to make a party very happy. <clears throat> Glad to hear any specialties of note? Uh, I can... I can uh, make food out of monsters? You're gonna make a party very happy. <laughs> and they finish scribbling down. And they put their paper to the side. You may wait in the tavern downstairs. We'll be calling you out for teams in about an hour and a half. <laughs> Alright, thank you. I, uh... I, I bow and I, I leave. I don't know if I'm supposed to bow. He's very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the crow doesn't look at you further. <laughs> and then it pounds on its desk. Next! And you're ushered out of the booth. <laughs> okay. Sitting downstairs in the tavern, listening to the crooning wails of 
an adventurer down on his luck, plucking away at a loot, sitting maybe three or four tables over with just rambunctious noise all around, people eagerly awaiting the recruitment slots, what teams are going to go out, who's going to get a job, who's not. We see playing with a small bit of steak at their half-clean plate. Celine, you have done this a hundred times before, and you just want to get your next mission so you can get paid. Move on with your day. Maya, if you would like to describe Celine. Celine is a 5'8", human-looking gal, um, clad with raven feathers and a cloak, very pale in complexion, with a uh, really eerie kind of almost uh, reflective eyes. And uh, she has a kind of relaxed um, demeanor in this sort of place in Iron Claw. The whaler finishes up his tune and there is a soft bit of quiet before another bard gets up and uh, pats him on the shoulder. The sad bard goes over, picks up his empty hat he left out for tips and goes over and sits down at what appears to be returning to a half-eaten meal. And he begins writing in a, some sort of journal of his. Music starts up again, and as you're enjoying your food, another individual enters the doorway. You've got a pretty good eye for um, noticing people of intrigue, people that's just sort of catch your eye in a way in that, that every civilian does. But as you look for a second longer, you recognize the silhouette and the billowing robes and the grandeur poise as a figure clad in white and gold robes steps through and your eyes immediately light up and Malfric is standing there in the doorway. You are surprised and confused, but delighted at seeing an old friend. Jacob, if you would like to describe your character. The figure walking into the tavern is a, a, a rather a tall but uh, slim individual. Um, nearly six foot um, with pale white skin um, and just bright, vibrant golden eyes. Uh, just kind of very spindly um, Malfric sort of walks in and uh, immediately kind of just like scans the room and um, notices Celine and uh, notices Celine uh, looking at him. Ah, uh, father! Come, come here, come here. Come take a seat next to me. I got, I got a little extra food you can share. Why, how kind of you. And, uh, Malfric sort of uh, glides over um, and uh, takes a seat next to Celine. It's been, it, it has been a while since I've seen a friendly face. Indeed. I'm doing well now that I have found you. Oh, you were looking for me. Yes. In do fact, want, the Sanguine Church. Friendly? What was that? Do you want some of my biscuit? Oh, that's all right. I just ate. Okay. Um, and he kind of adjusts the little uh, face mask on his face. I was actually sent by the Sanguine Church of Sangsara to offer my services to you. I understand that we have been chosen to be in the same party. Well, shit. <laughs> that I mean I am I welcome you with open arms. I I actually owe you kind of a debt. So yeah. Welcome. Oh, I believe you owe us a debt. Dealing with the heretic Lacrius was no simple task. Oh yeah. Indeed. 
that that guy. Mm -hmm. No, that. You know me. I. Uh... I hate assholes, so... <laughs> yes, as do we. Me and my brothers were quite pleased to see him return to Valtoris with the mark of shame. Good, because uh, it was hard to put that on him, let me tell you. <laughs> Indeed. No simple task for a young raven such as yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yep. And uh, Celine's just gonna down a beer. <laughs> <laughs> Turning our attention back to the recruiting office. Next. The voice calls out once again. This time to a taller, foreign to this part of the land, to Baxi figure. Tabby, if you would like to describe your character. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um, Ava is a kind of uh, five and a half foot uh, tall uh, gray tabaxi woman who is wearing a lot of like kind of dark red robes and uh, has this big uh, cast iron gauntlet on one arm and is for as intimidating as an outfit she is wearing, she is looking very, like, pensive and nervous. And as soon as they call her name, she kind of, as they call next, she jumps and jolts a little bit and just, um, oh, oh yeah. And she'll walk right over. As you enter the booth with a curtain closing behind you, you once again see the hunched crow-like humanoid figure that calls out. Name? Uh, Ava Kelsakora. All right. You know, looks down, starts writing that out. Looks back up and squints a little intensely. She kind of sinks into her own neck a little. You, Valtorin. Uh, yeah, do you need to, like, f start filling for her bags looking for the insignia? I... Funny coincidence, scratches its neck with a long, uh, aging, decolored claw. We've gone about three of you in today. Quite a coincidence. What's so many Valtorans doing over here in Iron Claw? Do you know anything about the, the entire, like, nervous uh, appearance will drop and she'll put, like, an elbow right on the table? Yeah, yeah, there's, a, there's an elderly fella in white and gold robes and a, <coughs> a younger lass in, uh, seemed to have black feathers on her shoulders. Walked around with a big silver gun. You know him. Her mouth will just kind of drop for a moment. And it just... Yeah. Can we hurry this up? Because I, I would like to go meet these people. <laughs> oh, uh, sure. <clears throat> uh, occupation? Uh, I, I'm a scholar. Alright. And we'll just slowly scribble that down. Adventures are going to love that one. Do you have any specialties? Can you wield a sword or something, scholar? Um, I wouldn't say I'm useful in that sort of deal, but I, I am quite well versed in the arcane arts and. Uh, oh, oh, you're a magic type. Yes. Okay. I'll be fine. Scribble something out on the paper and rewrite it. <laughs> All right, you can wait in the tavern downstairs. They'll be calling out teams in about an hour or so. And she'll just not even say goodbye and just leave quickly and kind of do like the fast double down the stairs and is just going to start rapidly looking around the room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> As you careen out the recruitment office, down the flight of stairs, wrapping back around the building, you burst into the Drunken Sparrow Tavern and all the music stops for 
but a moment as you startle the bard, and then he keeps strumming, but a lot of eyes are on you right now. As you look around, it's a lot of golden gleams from Kenku and various other tough-looking adventurers, mercenaries, scars, large teeth, brutal huge weapons. Everybody looks both nervous and anxious, but also like they're ready for a fight. Everybody, there's a lot of pent-up energy in here. I was just going to make like a very light like squeak of nervousness as she just like almost crumples down into herself out of just anxiety and just I, I just I guess I'm going to go I'm just going to mm -hmm, I'm just going to crawl along the wall away people start returning to their drinks um but Malfric and Celine you see you both see a familiar tabaxi burst into the room and much as you know her shrink in on herself and sidle up against the wall <laughs> She's about 15 feet away from you on the wall. From your table. Ava? Ava, is that you? Celine? She'll like try to navigate through Where 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 are you? I'll like kind of semi step on the table and like wave my tankard. I'm over here, kitten! Come here! <laughs> <laughs> just see a pair of ears through the crowd of people shuffle forward until uh... also like look towards Malfric and be like did you also invite Ava here I did not invite her here though it is a pleasure to see you once again you're uh that court wizard's daughter are you not she's just as soon as she reaches the table she's just going to like pounce tackle onto Celine down onto the table. Hey, whoa. Say, <laughs> Oh, fuck, I've been looking all over for you. You, you have? It looks, seems like a lot of people are looking for me, and I'm, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's good to see you. As soon as she realized she made a bit of a question, she'll lead back. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't initially looking for you. It was just, um, my, I heard about uh, the Taurus Knight and come over here and I'm I'm rambling I'm rambling aren't I I'm really it's really nice to see you and she'll give you a hug oh thank you darling um are you familiar with um father maverick uh, hello father and she'll like put out a very like almost shaky but stingy hand to just... it's okay. great to see that your orders over here Indeed. In fact, I have been sent to serve in... I have been sent to serve Celine. Surely you've heard the news. She's been quite the bustle back in our hometown. <laughs> well, I actually haven't been there for a, a little bit. Oh, really? It's not important. There's nothing you can, uh, you know, we could just skip that. Um, but I'd you're here! I'd love to hear all about it, yeah! Yeah, maybe later, when we're drunk and away from this dirty place. God, I, I, would, I would love to get away from here right now, because it feels like 11 people are staring at me, and I don't want to be here. I mean, there are 11 people looking at you. Actually, 12, if you count the bard. She's going to pull like her little collar hood up above her head a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Malfric, you notice that maybe two people are looking. Everybody else is busy returning to their drinks. <laughs> I keep that to myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so what have you been up to? Uh, you know, just keeping busy, um, picking jobs, saving some money on the side. Not much, really. Just kind of been hanging around Ironclaw for a bit. And um, you, you two are actually the first news um, in a while, so that's about it. Oh, oh, um, I could definitely see the experience on your jaw. There's a couple uh, new ones there. Oh yeah, that that was uh, actually Lacrius, as I was talking with uh, Father Maverick about, uh, got into a scuffle with another Valtora knight, and that went pretty, uh, pretty bad. Uh, cut me up a bit, you know, wolves. 
and their stupid claws oh. and dumb hammers and yeah anyways you look like you got a couple scuffs as well oh you know it's just um doing research in father's lab always ends up being a bit dangerous for the types that we do you like paper cuts or something I <laughs> sure <laughs> that yeah paper cuts oh. It's just like looking down. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to be well more prepared once we uh, get a group together, which I hope we're part of a group together. I don't know if it's like random or we get to choose, but hopefully I get you guys because you guys are pretty cool. Yeah, I, I would only be comfortable with you, and she'll like just side eye uh, Father Melfric. <laughs> He'll just kind of, uh, you know, shuffle back into a seat, kind of cross his arms. Returning yeah. to the recruitment office one last time for our current band of adventurers. Next. The crow humanoid calls out once more, this time to a taller much more experienced looking adventurer, having traveled the land for quite some time, gaining allies where he can. One Caden steps through the door into the booth. Blaine, if you would like to describe your character. <clears throat> sure, yeah. Caden is a uh, middle 40s, starting to get a little gray or white in his hair. He's got uh, dark hair salt and pepper kind of tight curls uh bearded um has a pretty uh stern face and carries himself in a pretty serious way um he's got uh, uh a metal breastplate and where uh fabric shows through and it's a, a red and black sort of fabric um yeah i uh, will uh enter the recruitment booth. <laughs> the crow figure looks up. Well, well. You look like you're ready for some shit. <clears throat> Name? Yeah, not the first time. Caden. <laughs> Scribbles that down. Have you a surname? I don't think it's necessary to tell you. Fair enough. <laughs> Occupation. Uh, adventurer. Let's let's go with that. <laughs> All right, adventurer. Your scars and damage on your armor says otherwise. <laughs> Whatever team gets you is gonna be ready for anything. <laughs> Party picking's gonna happen in about an hour. You can wait downstairs in the tavern. Real quick, though, do you have any specialties to offer? Yeah. Yeah, I can, uh, I can, uh, win people over. Is that yeah. so? Yeah, I think so. I think I could, uh, talk you into doing something that you wouldn't want to do. Like, the crow looks around. Are you proposing something right now? Cause, uh, no, no, I don't need anything from you. <laughs> Twitch says it's on an ad break. Are people not gonna see us right now if it's on an ad break? That's yeah, correct. it's an ad. Okay, I'll let you know when we go live again. <laughs> Gamer. Just me yeah. and my two Baltoran buddies. Nothing can go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> also, like, Mal Malfric's only like 30. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> He's just balding. He's going through his, uh. Yeah. <laughs> his vibes age like cheese. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like milk. He's got, he's got big old man energy. Holy mm -hmm. shit. 
Older He's got Steve me. Martin energy. He's already mm. whiting out. Don't talk to me <laughs> about Steve Martin. <laughs> <laughs> We got. We're on the last ad, I think. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Oh, like he likes the uh, three the or four. Oh. Oh, Skeleton Slime says they don't see an ad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess then we keep we're going. The <laughs> then we and are the ad. <laughs> <laughs> if there's subs, that might be why. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it could so be for skill space. <laughs> we are not so sponsored bad. as we return. <laughs> Push Push it back mm -hmm. <sighs> All right. Uh, as the crow was saying, y you mean like right now? Like, Yeah, I'm I, sorry. I think I'm, I could confused. motivate you to do something that you wouldn't want to do. I'm a talker. All right. If I can, if I can resolve something peacefully, I would do that. Interesting. Scribble something down on the paper. You can wait downstairs in the tavern. Uh, party calling will be in about an hour. Thank you, and I'll leave. As you exit the booth, there's a bit of clamoring, and uh, you begin to exit the recruitment office area, and you hear the small crow voice scream out over the crowd, We're closed for the day! And there's lots of booing and frustrated people as you exit the recruitment office and make your way down the steps towards the tavern. Standing just outside the tavern, returning to you, Poe, you hear an oh-so-familiar voice. Listen. Hey. Hey. When we gotta get some grub around here, I'm starving. <laughs> starving to cook something up. And you recognize the oh-so-irritating small voice of Bolin calling from your pack. I, uh, I kind of shuffle off to, like, a, a wall, and I slip off my backpack and peek in and be like, must you be so loud? We can't cook don't anything right now. It's stuffy in there. You don't in even back. have you a way to breathe. What are you keeping here, damn clothes? I swear, I've tasted better garlic than whatever you're putting in your socks. Oh, you can taste things now. That's interesting. I can taste better than you. That, that po may be. is looking down at a small silver bowl with an angry face on it. Just for yes. the audience's point of view. <laughs> <laughs> And this bull is talking back. <laughs> oh, like, takes a glance around really quick. Just to, to make sure that no one's really, like, listening to them. <laughs> uh, it seems everybody looking around really quick with your passive that nobody's really paying attention to you. Everybody's pretty busy as the bazaar is in full swing during the uh, during the height of the day. I look back to my backpack and I go, you promised that you were going to be quiet until we got into a party. Well, is the party coming to us or are we bringing the party? <laughs> I, it, it, I, it, listen, just could you just please be quiet and I'll let you know, you know, when you could speak again. Jeez, now we're getting all demanding over here. I'm not Final trying to be demanding, I just thank you. Okay. But well, you're gonna let me season something later. Yes, yes, I promise. We'll cook later. Good, good. Alright. Get in there and show them what you're made of, champ. I will. I, I close the backpack and I put it back on. Alright. And then I, I kind of <laughs> just start looking around, seeing where I should go. 
Are you stepping into the tavern? Yeah, I'll enter the tavern. Oh. Okay. As you look around in the tavern, um, stepping in, the bard's playing music, everybody's getting their drinks and their foods delivered to them. The lunch hour rush is starting to pick up, and as you look around, you're not seeing really any available open seating except for one table in particular which has two more open seats at it but oh, it geez. is currently occupied by three individuals all with ghastly piercing eyes but they seem to be enjoying themselves but it is the only okay. seating available you do recognize the tabaxi though as somebody oh. else that was in line. Okay. Merely um, by yeah, somebody else that was in line upstairs yeah. just moments ago. Uh, Poe is going to, for once, stand up straight, take a deep breath, pull his cloak a little tighter around himself, and then start walking towards the table. And uh, to the to boxy say, "Hello, you were you were also in line for the, the recruitment, correct? My name's Poe." Just a small. <laughs> Oh. Oh, apologies. I didn't mean to startle you. Hi. Uh, she'll, like, try, like, three different handshakes before she meets your hand. Just, oh, it's just as uh, nervous. We're just slipping over <laughs> each other's <laughs> tracks. Anxiety <laughs> mirrored. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, Ava. This is my friend, Celine. Hey. Charmed. Oh, I guess that's the, uh, father. Which one are you? Malfric. Oh Malfric. A pleasure, I'm sure. Lovely to meet you both. Uh, I am Poe, as I said before. Uh, this tavern's rather crowded. Might I sit with you? You like drinks? I would love a drink. I've been traveling pretty far. Then take a seat. By if... all means. Thank you. I, I sit. So, Poe, you, uh... <clears throat> You're part of the recruitment thing too. Yes, uh, I, uh, I'm hoping to bring some some warm meals to my crew. I I'm not much for fighting, but uh, I can make a mean dish. Hold on a goddamn second. Did you say you can cook? Uh, yes. Oh, well, like I I like bake. to think so. Like bake and fry and all that stuff. Yeah. Well, baking's a little different, but I can manage it. Yes. Okay, listen, I don't know how to fucking do any of that shit. Um, and I understand that there's some groups that are going to be arranged. Why don't you come and join our group? I can, um, I can pitch a tent. Uh, I can make a good drink, but I can't cook. Having a cook would be really nice. I, I would love to join if he looks around. Are, are we allowed to do that? Honestly, they let you do whatever you want here. Oh, well, then I would, I, if you would, if you would have me, I, I would love to join your crew. Vote. I vote for Poe. Anyone else? Poe. Um, Malfrick. I vote for Poe. Gingerly <laughs> raise his hand. <laughs> Part of the crew now. He uh, he's just beaming from ear to ear. And he looks so <laughs> relieved. He just kind of sinks back in his seat. And, uh... That's so, it. Yeah, he just sits there quietly. <laughs> <He> just... <laughs> so, so what what would you say would be your signature meal? Oh. Uh, well... Uh... I, it really depends on what I can get my hands on. I, I fancy, uh... To cook from the Feywilds... Uh, but I am, I'm looking to explore a little more and try something out that is a little more well-known around these parts. Is there, is there a dish that you guys might like that I could try? I do like blood pudding. That's my favorite, at least. Okay. That is a really good one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good blood pudding. Um, I also like just a nice, like, roasted chicken, I would say. But, like, chicken. spicy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Interesting. What about you, uh, Father Malfric? Well, I could never say no to a nice rare steak. Hmm. 
Interesting. All right, he, he pulls out, like, a little booklet while you guys are talking, and he's, like, writing all of this down. Ooh, that's a fancy cookbook. Yes, well, I, see, back home, I ran my own restaurant, see, with the, we only serve Feywild dishes, uh, so I'm kind of just trying to expand the, the food for my restaurant back home. You keep saying Feywild. I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Oh, it's uh, it is a, a far off land. Uh, it is uh, you can't really get there without traveling pretty far. So, oh. yes. Did you did you walk here or travel? I came by, by boat? boat. Ah, by boat. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh. We must I... teach you some Valtorian dishes. What Please, I would, I would give love to, to have a piece of home. I know, it's been a while since I've had blood pudding. <laughs> Indeed. I, I would love to make any dishes that you request. I'm here to learn. Well, hopefully we can get some interesting cuisine around Ironclaw. They have some really weird creatures around here. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. At It's at that moment that you all hear very heavy steel plate boots hit the tavern floor as a lot of the drinks go quiet to see the tall imposing armored figure of Caden standing in the doorway oh oh oh, oh. <laughs> Caden as you hide cup <laughs> Caden as you look around um you see that the tavern is very packed. There isn't much space towards the bar, and there appears to be one open seat to your right at a table full of strangers. Though you did see some of them at the recruitment office upstairs, so your choices are I'll limited. Walk. I'll walk up to the table. Not a, lot, not a lot of space here, hey? Mind if I uh, join you? Oh, sure. If you share us your name, tall, dark, and handsome. Uh, Caden. Caden. You know, I, I always hate going through these lower rung stuff first, you know? Done this so many times. <laughs> Indeed. I know that. Yeah, Wait, take you're, a all, you're all experienced in all this. Yeah. <sighs> Been around the block. Definitely look it. But here Sorry, I am. Sorry, is that rude? Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Nothing wrong with honesty. Fine honesty sometimes. So, Cadence, you also part of the brigade of finding work? Yeah, just uh, more or less got kicked out of Garatross and uh, oh, got a find a new place and uh, set up shop again. Oh, yeah. what a place but, to start. Yeah. Are you all locals or where are you, where are you guys from? Well, it seems a few of us hail from the great cities of Valtoris. Ah, yes, Valtoris. Though I cannot speak of the strange lands that Poe claims to be from. Oh, yes, I, uh... I, uh, I'm from a beautiful city out in the Feywilds. Uh, it's called... Uh, uh, Astrazalian? Have you heard of it? Have I heard of it? Make me a history check. First roll of the game, oh. baby! First roll! <laughs> uh, that is an 18. Hey, nice! An 18. You would have heard of it. Uh, Milky, if you would describe Astrazalian. <laughs> uh, it is uh, one of the most common port towns of the Feywilds. Um, so it, if you're a, a visitor of the Feywilds, this is probably like the first town that you would really go to. Uh, it's a very large town, uh, lots of 
Lots of uh, cobbled walls and streets uh, and plenty of shops before you uh, get deeper into like the more creepy areas. There you have it. Ah, the Fae. Well, that's interesting. Yes, uh... I, uh, I, uh, I, I touch one of my horns, I go, I, I am a, a satyr, so, you know, pretty common folk from there. Noted. Oh, this whole time I thought you were a tiefling. <laughs> no, it's a common misunderstanding, actually. Satyr. Hmm. You look better than a tiefling, honestly. Oh, thank you. I, uh, don't believe I've met a tiefling. They also got pointy horns sometimes. Um, They're very colorful. Yeah, they could be very colorful too. Hmm. Interesting. As you all begin ordering drinks and meals, you be you continue your chatter for uh, roughly half an hour before the bard wraps up his set and. A hush falls over the crowd as a small figure, familiar to you, Celine, enters the tavern. This figure appears roughly four feet tall and has a blue translucent sheen to them that almost seems to penetrate their very body as they step through and what looks like a small humanoid lizard is translucent all the way through, almost like they are made of a jelly. But to the pa to the tavern goers, they all recognize this as the half ooze, uh, Grubel. <laughs> and Grubel walks towards the front of the tavern and stands up tall. All right, <clears throat> we're going to begin the call for uh, party casting. If you hear my net, if you hear your name, step forward and I will organize your party and give you your contract. Those who do not get called, you have not been suited for selection at this time. And we encourage you to try again later. And over about the next 20 minutes, Grubel is going through name by name as people come up and are assigned parties of all different mismatched characters. Some people get up as entire tables as a party. Other people are pulled and plucked from their tables and there's a few disgruntled, you know, waves of annoyance. A couple people saying good luck. And then... Grubel looks at their sheet for a moment. All right. <clears throat> for the next party. Ava. Kelsakora. Oh, God, uh, why did I have to be first? Father Malfric. Uh, Akaden. Poe Castiron. And, uh... A Celine Castillo. Come and get your contract. What do you know? We were already part of a group. Ah. My what luck. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we'll go up and collect our contracts. Yeah. As you all stand up and make your way towards the front. You notice a lot of other eyes watching you go up there as this is seems like most of the tables have already been called up. A lot of people are starting to get anxious. You reach Grubel at the front, the small lizard like half ooze, and he hands you a rolled up contract. Inside, you'll find the details of your contract. <sighs> um, Yeah. Return here when it's done, and uh, the processing should take care of the rest once you get back to headquarters. You got it, boss. All right, you'll find the details inside. Then they clap their hands. All right, 
That concludes party casting. If your name was not called, you were not deemed suited for these quests and <clears throat> these jobs at this time. We encourage you to try again later and you hear a tinkered thrown across the room as it splashes ale across the wall and many people gasp and you see this tall muscular orc stand up that's bullshit i've been trying here for three weeks to get a job and you tell me i'm not suited to fight fucking bandits to fight enclaves to raise a sa to save a fucking kitten from a tree what's it take to get a bloody job around here and he starts muscling his way past uh, chairs and tables towards Grubel at the front, followed by two stout-looking dwarves. <laughs> and he gets right up in his face and he says, I want a fucking job right now before I have to go up and get all nice and diplomatic with the, <laughs> with the Kenku up top. And Grubel is, like, standing his ground a little bit, but people are giving... This confrontation, sort of a wide berth. Malfrick, you notice that out of the corner of your eye, a few Kenku slowly start to unsheathe knives. <laughs> I kind of, um... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, speak to everybody in their minds. And I'm going to say, it looks like some foul business is about to take place. Can we respond back? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna, like, tiptoe backwards and try to make myself not visible. <laughs> I was just gonna walk right next to Celine and, like, kind of yeah. hold onto her arm <laughs> as soon as they hit the shadows. It's I like will, the horse and also... the kids are going... <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I will follow Celine's lead. As you all begin slowly making your way back to the table, one of the dwarves reaches out and pushes pushes Ava and you stumble and the dwarf shouts This bloody one got here today and they got a job? Are you fucking kidding me? What kind of a jokey place is this? And uh, uh, um, the dwarf walks over and is just towering over your... <sighs> Come on. You think you're better than me? You think you deserve that contract more than me? And, like, starts to squat and get right in your face. Go on. Prove you're better than me. Make something happen. She's just and gonna... his... Breath is just rank. Uh, gross. Malfrick watches Celine to see what she does. Uh, Please go away, and I'm gonna cast Catapult and put a chair right in his face. Yeah. <laughs> what is the like weight limit on crying. Catapult? Five pounds? I believe the weight limit for Catapult is five pounds. Oh, then a tankard. Hopefully filled okay. with something. Okay. I can I assist in this by chance? Um, he has to make a saving throw. Yeah, I want to. Uh, I want to basically stick my foot out so he trips backwards. <laughs> oh. Okay, you yeah, stick your foot out. <laughs> yeah, no, you stick your foot out. Um, what is the save he has to make? Uh, dexterity sixteen. You rolled a natural sixteen. Fuck. <laughs> But Damn. it was full of ale. Yeah. As the tinkered whizzes past, it splashes him with the ale. And there are variable gasps. And he grunts, You rotten little punk. Celine, and help. <laughs> he goes, uh, just, like, just, can As can I he just, goes, like, get... All right, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> As he goes to throw a punch, um, the orc and the other dwarf also get riled up, and they both immediately grab clubs at their hips. Oh, and 
pretty soon the tavern breaks into an uproar. <laughs> As I change the music and we switch over to initiative. Oh. <laughs> I was just gonna say, time to go, let's go! <laughs> out the bar, out the bar! <laughs> Alright, I need everybody to roll for initiative. Alright. Oh, natural 20, hell yeah. Nice! Yeah. nice. First natural 20 of the game! I rolled a 19! <laughs> yeah, I rolled a 15 same. plus 2, so 19, 20, 21. <laughs> We both have the same plus. Awesome. Okay, so first was Blaine. Okay, 25 to 20. 22. 22? 21. 21. Okay. Uh, who's got the higher de Who's got the higher decks? Mine's 15. My decks is also 15. <laughs> okay. Same turn. Rollies? You guys, Rollies? yeah, you guys can go in tandem. <laughs> we can work together. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we've got friends over here. I'll rearrange the tokens in just a second. DM only has left audio output right now. Oh, let me fix that. That happens all the time. Whatever you do, don't hurt the bunny. <laughs> <laughs> Not the bunny. The I'm gonna be bunny. hiding. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. And then uh, Malfric and Poe. Uh, I, I rolled a 15. Okay. So we're going to go then, then Malfric, and then there was the final dwarf. <laughs> All right. Going to apply the turn order. I'm going to set these guys up where they were relative to you all. <clears throat> and then we have the last dwarf over here. And everybody else is just watching you guys right now. Ooh. Nobody else is necessarily engaging at the moment. Got it. Can you can you shake the the people? I, I missed where everybody is. Yeah. We've got the orc here. We've got one of the dwarves here. And we've got one of the dwarves here. Okay. Or orc ladies. <laughs> okay. First up is First up is uh Caden. Caden is going to unsheathe uh, Valhazoth and then approach uh, the orc here. Um, it's not Whoops. letting me move him for some reason. Are you not able to... Yeah. I can't. I was moving him earlier. can't move him now, though. Try arrow keys. Arrow keys. No. But can, if you're able to, can you move me just in front of the orc? Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll unsheath Valhazoth and I'll I'll say to the orc, um, you can walk out with just a spilled tanker, or you can walk out, or maybe not even walk out and spill some blood. Yeah. Oh, I think it's you who threw the tankard first. You and your friends there. <laughs> you made your decision. You and I'll hit him with my sword. Alright, go ahead and make your attack rolls. Okay. Uh, first one is a dirty 20. Alright, nice. that hits. So that is at 7 points of slashing damage. Alright. And then the second one is a 19. That hits. And that is 
math. Uh, ten points of slashing. <laughs> All right. With your two attacks, you manage to slice open parts of his arms, uh, finding purchase on him. As he cries out, he gets this angered look in his eyes, but it turns his grimace into a bit of a grin. Now this is what I've been waiting for. Um, and then as a bonus action, I will, um, for the audience, I'm playing a custom class. I'm playing Matt Colville's uh, Illrigger uh, class. So I'm, as my bonus action, I'm going to use Baleful Interdict. I'll reach out my hand and place a, a, a seal on the, um, the dwarf just to the left of me. All right. You reach out with your infernal powers and plant the seal on him, which appears faintly for just a moment as your hellish sign before seeping beneath the surface of his clothing. He doesn't seem to notice at the moment as his eyes are fixed upon our tabaxi friend. Uh, I believe that is my turn. All right. Next in the order, we have Abba. Oh dear, okay. Uh, Ava, still kind of like on the ground, is going to try to like scoop back a little bit and put up the uh, cast iron gauntlet in between her and the dwarf and uh, just clench her fist as uh, red magic will just kind of pulse around her very quickly as she casts mage armor on herself. All right. You cast the mage armor as it bursts out from your gauntlet in a flare of red energy that shimmers over your skin like a shield. And then, uh, yeah, she's just gonna try to scoot back a little bit and uh, just get away from the dwarf. All right, scoot back a little bit, trying to distance yourself mm -hmm. from this foul smelling creature. Mm hmm. Try, like, gagging a little bit, uh, just nope, yeah, <laughs> go get just putting like putting Celine in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> all right is that your turn yep next we have celine celine it I is your will... turn yeah i'm gonna walk a little bit forward to pivot myself in front of ava okay so i think i can can i move myself no okay perfect and then I'm going to. Can you guys not move yourselves? No, I, I'm not able to move myself. Yeah, I'm not anymore. able to move anymore. Maybe it's because or... it's not our turns yet. Oh, it could be. Here, let me do this. You should all have free control now. Cool. Okay. <laughs> or... I just wanted to test. It's all good. I'm going to... I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we could try. Um, I'm going to use my Blood Curse of Binding as a bonus action to attempt to bind a creature that I could see in 30 feet. And it must okay. succeed on a saving throw of a DC 12. All right. You reach out with your blood curse, gripping forward as blood pulses along your arm and reaches out in red lancing, spining tendrils and chains that wrap out. And you see him visibly wince at the gesture and then his arm fold in tight against his torso and his knees clack together as if bound by some invisible chains. Dope. As the... Blood Curse of Binding takes hold. Uh, the fuck is this? I'm just gonna say, just chill out, man. God, it's not worth it. Really. Uh, fuck you, bitch. Oh, okay. I'm gonna take my gun out and point it at him like, I'm sorry. As an intimidation there... check, if I can do that. Yes, you may. There is a 
a sudden gasp of oohs and ahs across the crowd as nobody is quite familiar with this strange device that Celine has pulled out of their holster. Sleek, uh, steel, cast iron, pistol-like. It's it's much more like um, a flintlock pistol, which is very uncommon in this day and age. Though, um, Ava and Malfric, you are both very aware of the weapon that she wields. All right, go ahead and make that in. Yeah, roll intimidation. for intimidation. Yes. Um, please don't hurt my friends. <laughs> uh, that's a flat 15, baby. <laughs> flat 15. You see the dwarves' eyes, eyebrows furrow a bit as beads of sweat start to form at his temples, and his shaking from restraint turns to a slight... You sense a slight quiver of fear in his shaking now. Uh, uh, all right, uh, let's just take it easy. You, I, I don't know what that thing is, but you can lower it. Yeah, you don't want to know what this thing does. And that will end my turn. All right. Next up, we have the orc that has been engaged with Caden. The orc is going to pound his fists together and just throw haymaker after haymaker at you. The first one comes in for a wild swing in 11 and the second one for a 10. Uh, they both miss. As his first hit, as his first fist tries to connect with the side of your head, you instinctively lower your frame and raise up your gauntleted arms, deflecting the first attack. And as his second fist tries to uppercut you in the chin, in the chin, um, you turn your palm towards him and just sort of guide it away from yourself, almost like a slap. And he seems very pissed off at what you just did, battering him around like a like a fucking child's instructor. <laughs> Ending his turn, we come to the other dwarf, um, who is a bit confused at what to do, isn't sure they want to engage with this group of Altorans, but doesn't want to seem like a coward in front of their friends. So they're going to rush over to this table and they're going to grab the knife that's sticking out of it. And they are going to turn towards you, Caden, and they are going to slice forward with it. That is a natural 20 to hit. Ooh. Oh. Jesus. <laughs> no! With the first damage of the game you take as they sink the knife in between the slits of your breastplate and your abdomen. You take eight piercing damage as you feel the familiar red hot pain uh, seep into your gut for just a moment before she pulls it back out and blood is drawn. Not bad. Come on, then show us what you're made of. And instead of her second attack, she's just going to swipe the knife wildly. With that, we're going to move on to Poe. We don't have the figures we want right now, so everybody got to choose their figure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's why Poe, the satyr, is a little rabbit. <laughs> okay. Uh, anxiously. Not really sure what to do, because, again, Poe is not really much of a fighter. They'll step out uh, and draw out a hand crossbow that they have and All right. fire it at um fire it at this dwarf here in front of me. Okay, go ahead and make an attack. This roll. Is just <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> um that is a ten plus my dex uh so thirteen. Alright. And the dwarf is currently restrained so <laughs> you aim at this paralyzed dwarf who is trying to hold their composure 
in front of Celine and you land a crossbow bolt that just sinks into their shoulder and they gasp out, ah! She also yells, bitch! Oh! <laughs> I'm oh, so sorry. Oh, God. I'm, I'm already okay. restrained. Are you okay? <laughs> Fuck you too. <laughs> That's the end of my turn. Alrighty. Oh, my God. <laughs> Move <it. laughs> Moving on. Father Malfric. You see your Faltoran uh, pupils getting along nicely with their friends. <laughs> what do you do with your turn? Malfric. Sees. So that, that half orc lady is a dwarf then? Yeah. Okay. Malfric sees that Caden has just been stabbed by this young dwarf. He begins to whisper under his breath so that no one may hear. And he allows the dwarf to hear the blessed voice of Songsara. I cast dissonant whispers. Uh saving throw. All right. As these whispers carry out, she gets a natural three on her saving throw. Telepathically, before I do this, I tell her, you will not live to regret this. <sighs> she starts looking around. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> a failed save she takes 3d6 psychic damage. No, 4d6 psychic damage. Oh my god. Damn. That's 18. Um she drops she to a to, knee. What was that? Move as far, uh, she has to move as far away from me as possible. All right. Yeah. Well, how much damage did you do? 18. That's okay. Um, she drops the knife in front of her friends and clutches her head. Um, and she starts to go down on her knee and she's like reaching around and like you can see her, her lips trembling and like her eyes going wide looking around. She is clearly distraught with the voices penetrating her skull and as she starts to crawl away from you the voice is becoming too much um she collapses <laughs> oh my gosh damn is she dead you see blood pouring out of her ears <laughs> oh my god oh my god <laughs> I, I for this no by the way no one no one heard Unless you can. What? If you have like a really high, I, I whispered it. So like, you know, mm -hmm. nobody would have known it was me unless they have a really high perception or something. Oh, your spell incantation? Yeah, yeah. Um, From where they're at, no, nah, nobody else heard. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Okay. Um, is that your turn? <laughs> that, that's my turn, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well done. Next up, we have the the dwarf once again, who is restrained and now uh, has gained a crossbow bolt. <laughs> um, did I roll damage for that bolt? I don't know if you did. Go ahead and roll damage. Okay. I think we were caught up in the moment. <laughs> yeah, we all got a. I got a little bit panicked there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna pop the seal when she does damage. Okay. Uh, it is a seven. A seven? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, as the blood starts to, as the, as the bolt starts to seep with a, a red stain in the shoulder, um, what does the seal do? Uh, <clears throat> I roll two d6, um, and it does that necrotic damage alright so go ahead and roll your necrotic damage as the uh, fresh it's... wound opening up invokes your hellish seal uh, I rolled a 5 or five. alright you can see it's a slow stain that pulls out and then it begins to spread faster as the man kind of gets 
a little bit heavy winded before he as well uh, <laughs> collapses <laughs> to the ground. <laughs> Just limp, frozen and restrained <laughs> by your invisible cords. <laughs> All right. And with that, we're back to Caden. <laughs> I'm just gonna look at the two uh, dwarves to the each side of this orc and say, "Are we done?" The orc looks at you; its fist still in the air. Well, I'm still standing, aren't I? Really don't want to merc this guy, but do it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna try to just uh, non-lethally like swipe at his thighs uh, to like make him drop to the ground. Okay. There's a bit of an uproar and a cheer as people have started to gather around to watch the spectacle now, and people, you can hear various calls of people placing bets, of of people just like watching this all <laughs> go down. Some other people have started throwing fists at each other. A a brawl is starting to spread out throughout the bar. Uh oh. <laughs> Love it. Alright, I'm gonna All right. swipe at his thighs. Oh, oh, one off the table. Uh, that's a 23. <laughs> Alright. For. Uh, that's seven points of slashing. Uh, this is okay. non-lethal attacks, too. He's okay. Uh, seven points of, non -sla of non-lethal of non slashing. Um, <laughs> yeah, you basically take the blunt side of your blade and you smack it against his knee and you hear this audible cracking sound um, as he cries out in pain. Um, but he does drop to a knee, still breathing, though. And he looks up at you. Uh, so, it was a cheap shot. And here's another. I'll, I'll do the, <laughs> the blunt side of the blade on his head. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. uh, that's a 10, though. Oh, uh, he's prone. Right? Uh, I'd say enough. Yeah, go ahead and roll with advantage. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, 19. 19. 19. That does hit. Um, as you bring the blade down, there is an audible twang as your blade um, flexes ever so slightly. Which sword are you using, by the way? Uh, Velhazoth. Oh, you're using Velhazoth. Okay. Um, there is a slight solid metal metallic ting resonance in the air as your blade connects with his skull and he drops backwards and you feel a tightness in your palm not from you gripping the sword but like the sword's gripping back as it tightens um mm. you watch him fall to the ground and now you see around you as other people have started engaging in this brawl and everybody's starting to throw drinks and throw fists. Some tables are starting to get flipped over. Um, and it's starting to break out into mayhem as your three adversaries stand defeated on the ground in front of you when there's suddenly a thunderous... Booming footsteps approaching. <laughs> and from the front of the tavern, stepping inside as we return to the player screen. At first, the tavern doorway is just blotted out. And you see a massive raven like hook claw reach up onto the upper side of the doorway 
and you see this large beak loom into the tavern, having to duck under and into the doorway before standing up at its full height. This roughly nine foot tall stork like individual, like a shoe build stork, lumbers in with a cloak that is ratted and torn, draped across its torso. Um, and the hood pulled low over so you can't see the eyes. Everybody is just looking up quietly. <sighs> Boss says it's getting too rowdy down here, <sighs> says the large, imposing bird folk. The bird folk looks over to the three individuals on the ground. Many people still grabbing collars, mid-punch, frozen in fear, looking at the tall figure, begin to loosen their grips and begin to clean up. Birdfolk reaches up to their neck and twists a chime that is uh, this small silver pendant that is hanging on their, on their neck by a small silver necklace. And it lets out this chime that resonates throughout the bar with this almost blue shimmering aura. And then the aura fades. And you all feel this twinge of truthfulness overcome you. Who are the dissenters? Who started the fight? And most of the tavern all at once, and even you feel compelled to, though whether you do so or not is your choice, point over at the three on the ground. As 50 or so fingers point at them, the figure lumbers over quietly and menacingly stoops down and reaches out and uh, starts just picking their weapons off of them. And the tavern keep looks up and says, ah, they did quite a number on the quite a number on the tables this time, Rook. There's a bit of blood here and there, but uh, see what you can find on them. And Rook, the tall bird figure, looks up and says, Not a problem. And he reaches into the depths of his hood and pulls out this small insectoid creature that is scampering around in his large taloned hand. And he puts it down on the ground and it skitters over to the three individuals lying there. And it begins rummaging through their pockets. See what you can find, skitters. And Ew. this small creature with its tiny little um, insectoid uh, pincers and mandibles begins rooting through and just pulling out coin after coin after coin. Stopping every once in a while to undo a belt buckle and eat the belt buckle with large crunching sap with uh, large mandibles that leave this uncomfortable uh, crunching sound as metal is dissolved within its mouth. Um, anybody can make a nature check if they would like to, to identify this creature. Me. As it continues doing that, it collects a small pile of coins that the tavern keeper picks up promptly and says, Oh, this should do nicely. Oh, I have some new tables hoarded. And 21 on the nature check, by the way. You recognize this as a rust monster. Oh, a very oh well, no. A very well-trained one, as it is not going after everything metal in sight. <laughs> All right, this should be enough to pay somebody to get the tables out of the... Get the blood out of the tables and chairs. Very well, Rook says. Come along now, Skitters. And Skitters, the small rust monster, climbs back up the claw, dragging one of the still sheathed long swords that it had pulled off the orc. And as it climbs back into the hood of the tall, shoe built stork individual, the sword is just slowly withdrawn into the darkness of the hood, 
followed by mucusy crunching sounds of metal getting snapped in half as the sword is slowly devoured. <laughs> and the tall figure uh, pulls out a massive burlap sack and just starts dragging the three individuals into the sack. <laughs> oh, jeez. Before dragging them outside. And the tavern music starts up once again, and people carry on <laughs> like this is a thing that happens way too often. <laughs> well done. Well done. You all did very well. You're quite the fighters, I might say. I know. Poe totally shot that guy. Oh, I, was I supposed to? I, I panicked. I mean, you did great. great. Yeah. Right between the collarbone. Pretty, pretty nice shot. Thank you. A new cadence. Shit. Indeed. You took down one of them, and you didn't even have to look at her. <laughs> you are quite the powerful warrior indeed. Thank I you. What, uh, what, what, what did you do? Oh, well, I am... But a humble priest, I simply put, you know, stuck back and watched the professionals at work. Alright. Yeah, fa father doesn't do that much, but, um, you know, he's, he's a good luck charm, so. Indeed. Though I am, though I am but a humble priest, I am a priest nonetheless. Would you require healing of any sort? I see that that foolish woman, that foolish dwarf stabbed you. Uh, do you require medical attention? Um, I, I did get stabbed. Uh, I, I could use a little healing. I'm not super hurt, but if you're offering, I will appreciate it. Indeed. I would be more than happy to oblige. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and cast your wounds on uh, Caden. Alrighty. Caden regains 10 hit points as Ooh. the as your very flesh begins to sew itself together. Blood and sinew sort of intertwine until there is nothing but a scar. Wow. That was that was nice. Thank you. I am more than happy to do my own part, however little it may be. I'll go up to Ava and try to help her up from the ground. You doing all right? Sure. Uh, very startled. Like her hand is shaking still. Well, you know, there's assholes all over this place, so gotta. Yeah. It's a I'll lot different together. from the school and the library and all of that. Oh no, these people are much worse. Like, they'll kill you. Oh, that's really confidence boosting. Oh yeah. Just mm -hmm. stick with just stick with the group and I think uh we'll be okay. Yeah, noted. I'm not turning my back to anyone ever again. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great that's a great choice. Uh, uh, stick with Poe, honestly. They're like they're they're kinda of bloodthirsty here. Mm. I, he just gives like a nervous little wave and a half smile. <laughs> Alpha's just gonna mirror that one for one. <laughs> <laughs> it may not mean much, Ava, but I will always watch your back. After oh, all, oh god, your no! Father... <laughs> <laughs> your father would never forgive me if anything were to happen to you. What was his name again? Uh, uh, <laughs> just Wasn't nervous. Was it like Gerald or something? Or, I don't know. No, 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 no. I'm surprised you don't remember him. It, it's Velen. It's, it's Velen. It's Velen. That's right. It's been a while since I've seen him. Indeed. I mean, <sighs> fucking church calls him a heretic, so he doesn't get to go out much. Sorry. I know how that feels. Mm -hmm. I mean, what? Sorry? Let's go outside. I don't want to. I'm 
Ava starts leaving. Yeah, let's 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 leave. I don't I don't think we should stay here longer. All right, you're all bending outside into the bazaar. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, with Celine and Ava stepping outside, uh, you guys see that business continues on out here. There are many stalls set up and rows uh, occupying both sides of the street. You can see that various people are selling their wares of all kinds. There's fish, there's baking, there's different foods. Some people are selling ornamental daggers, some others keepsakes. And you can buy just about anything here from food to grain to milk. And it's just a pleasant day, really. There's a heavy scent of uh, of the baked goods wafting uh, into the tavern space, mixing in with the stale stench of uh, mildew from chairs and ale. It's a very strange concoction in this strange and <laughs> quite lively area that is new to many of you. It's refreshing. Mm. Who has the contract? Was it, wasn't that you who took yeah. it? Yeah. Was... I think you took it. Oh, I, I took it? Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> uh, Alvo, can you read this? Oh, yeah, sure. And she'll just unscroll it, zoom it down, and close it. And she just speed reads the entire thing. Oh, my gosh. What is All right. Oh, looking over the contract, <laughs> looking over the contract, you can see that um, it is a a notice for a farmer about twenty miles east of here, um, off the Ironclaw Peninsula towards the city of Skaldheim. Not all the way, but they run a small uh, produce farm. And they're having trouble with their cattle disappearing due to an onkeg infestation. They are paying 100 gold pieces per onkeg slain and will offer an additional 500 gold if the onkeg nest is destroyed. You are to oh, seek are you out your. To... Sorry. Uh, you are allowed. You are. <laughs> your contact is um is the farm owner a human male uh named alfred we allowed to roll to see if we know what an on keg is yeah. yes you may anybody may make a nature check to see if they know what an on keg is nature check number two baby or an arcana check I will make an arcana check if uh, if Abba wants to do the nature. Um, anybody can somebody... roll for this. Yeah. Okay. I already rolled for the nature, which I got a 13. Okay. I got an 18 for arcana. Okay. Um, Ava, you recognize that an onkeg is a larger monster that does operate mostly underground in its hunting territories, but it is Yupo that recognizes it as the insectoid class of monster that is quite adept at burrowing and prefers to drag its prey underground before devouring it with its pack. Jesus. They are quite large monsters, so anything that's stealing cattle is probably about as big or maybe a little bigger than cattle. Oh, I, no. I, uh, I'll say to the, the group, uh, do the rest of you know what, what these creatures are? Because they're, they're quite dangerous. To be quite honest, I have no idea what that is. Uh, they're rather large, and they, uh... Yes, they, they have packs underground, so, uh... Like dogs? Sort of like wolves, I suppose, but ones that dig under the earth. Well... I mean, it's a hundred per... Pretty good. A hundred gold is really good, Celine. 
comparative to a lot of the missions you've gotten recently. A hundred gold's good money. Yeah. I have a good feeling about this run. Um, do you think we should maybe prep and like look into, I don't know, how to coax these things out from underground? Or... Yes, I think that would be wise. I think going into their nest would be a mistake. Mm -hmm. I agree. So it's like a library or something around here? I got into town this morning. Um, is, is there so a library here? Make me a history check, Celine. Natural 20! Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> oh. For a total of... Where is it? 21! You do know that there is a library just across town. It is run by an elderly owl folk named Isabel, and she is the sweetest darling you've ever met in Iron Claw, which isn't saying much, but she's been nice. <laughs> Uh, there is, um, one ran by quite a nice owl folk. Um, I could take you over if you think that might help with our mission. Yeah, I think that would be great. Okay. God, this library is... I think if we find out maybe what we can use to bait them, I think that might help. Kind of like a trap. You know, like a big rat and a mouse trap. I think that's something we should do. Although the farmer might not be happy if we have to use a cow for a trap. But that's something we'll discover when we get to the library. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Maybe they like something more, like lizards or fruit. I don't know. To the library! <laughs> <laughs> to the library! <laughs> I'm for quick. learning... What was the name of the farmer again? Alfred. 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 Thank you. Albert. Albert. <laughs> Page two of notes. Let's go. Hell yeah. <laughs> all right. You all make your way across the cityscape towards... Um, it looks like a bit of an older building. Um, as you approach it, a lot of the paint has been redone several times over the years, but the main structure seems like it's still the original piece. Um, very rustic as you enter uh, a gated front yard to this library almost. It almost seems more like a house as you approach it, but you do see people lounging about inside, going over various books through these aged uh, panes of glass that show the uh, the front lobby off of this library. And as you enter through the front door, um, you are greeted by a hushed, quiet, and pleasant smelling aroma and atmosphere. Um, as this library has several shelves kind of haphazardly placed around on this wooden interior, this roughly 20 by 40 foot long room that has a couple doorways branching off to various other sections. But the main part of it has bookshelves just kind of littered all to almost in a labyrinthian maze. But directly in front of you is a divide between them and sitting at the very end of it knitting together what appears to be a scarf um, is, as you remember, an elderly owl folk. This large um, bipedal, almost five foot tall, almost large looking barn owl that reaches up and has, as you can see, fingers um, much like a Kenku has that sort of extend from almost the edges of their wings um, reaching forward and knitting together this scarf. Um, she doesn't look up as she is peering through her tiny uh, circular glasses, staring very intently at her knitting work. Hmm. 
Alpha uh, goes immediately nose to the grindstone, just scanning books. Yeah, I want to uh, look around for like, you know, where they keep the Dewey Decimal System. The Dewey Decimal <laughs> System. <laughs> That's what it's called. It mm -hmm. is. <laughs> oh my gosh. To remind myself what the Dewey Decimal System is. So it's basically the way that we used to organize books before we had computers to tell us where they were. It's like these large, um, like cabinets that have little files of every index book that they card. have, and oh, it's yeah, right. they're little index <laughs> cards. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they're usually in alphabetical order by, uh, I think it's the authors is how they organize it. Yeah. Is that correct? Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> the two foot decimal system. <laughs> the two foot decimal system. Yeah, Cannon. what's the what's the fantasy Dewey decimal system called? Dungeon um, Dragon Decimal System. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The D and Decimal System. <laughs> the Duloc and Def Decimal System. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna look for books that have pictures in them. Whoever is looking for the book on Ankegs, I cast Guidance on you. Okay. I think that would be Abba. Mm -hmm. Just her fur stands up just for a moment, realizing as what you're doing. Just, oh, okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Let's make. Yeah, everybody go ahead and make me investigation checks. Everybody who's looking for something right now. Get code Sorry, for the I'm... decimal system. Uh, yeah, everybody go ahead and make me your checks. I got a four. Oh. <laughs> okay. This is investigation? Yep. Oh. Oh, hey, <laughs> you'd be proud. I just popped my back. Hell yeah. Oh. Congrats. You won't believe oh. what I rolled. Don't tell me. A nat 20? A natural one. It was a natural one. <laughs> a oh natural God. one. <laughs> We're doing so good. The one good. thing I'm supposed to be good at, about. gamers. <laughs> and oh, no. with your guidance, that with guidance us to a my, total uh, of 10. Yay! 10. Oh, hey. Okay, that's not bad. <laughs> Actually, not horrible. Okay. Smart. And 16. Celine, what are you looking for? 16. Okay. I'm looking for pretty picture books. <laughs> Okay, and uh, you, you know doing anything, Caden? Wink, wonk. Yes, I do. <laughs> um, I'm just like looking at the spines for like philosophy textbooks, but I'm not actually gonna like for anything specific. Just seeing what the library has. Okay. Um, the library seems to have a lot of cultural references to uh, various societies throughout uh, Galdrea. A few from Sylvain, from the Guljuna Empire. A lot of it seems to be more older day novels, some fictional, some retellings of, you find some books on the Age of Thieves, um, some that are heroic tales um, and self-proclaimed biographies of people that claim to have fought during the schism. A lot of this seems like fictional work, given how new some of the spines are. But there is a lot of a lot of mixed mashed and almost seemingly random placements of books um, as you somehow find yourself thumbing through uh, horticulture and flower growing directly after the war self-proclaimed autobiographies. <laughs> OK, <laughs> uh, Celine, you are looking for pretty pictures. And what you end up finding is um, a few anatomy books by older medicinal scholars. And there, are, as you start thumbing through the pages, you do find a couple models, but it's mostly of the half model and half skeletal or muscular systems. And you become discouraged that you might not uh, find the pretty pictures you were looking for in this library. Dang it. I'm just going to, like, boredly, like, actually read the anatomy book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ava, 
as you begin looking for books on on cakes, um, is that what you were looking for? Yeah. Okay. With a 10, um, you circle the books uh, and the bookshelves for roughly 45 seconds before you realize that there is no order to these. Oh, God. Nothing is in place. Everything is mismatched. It's nice, nice and like tidy and organized. And the most you can really put together about the structure of this organization is the color of spines. Oh, Lord. What a horrible <laughs> way to organize this. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you, Poe, um, looking around for any set of index cards, any sort of uh, do for decimal system. <laughs> uh, <laughs> instead, f you, you do find uh, a selection of note cards that appear to be thrown somewhat organized in a stack on the counter next to the owl folk at the front. He winces? And like looks to the owl, uh, the owl, and and says, "Excuse me, are are you the librarian?" And uh, the owl folk takes a moment, adjusts her glasses, and blinks a few times before looking up at you. Oh, uh, yes, goodness me, um, I got lost in thought there. Yes, I am the librarian. I am Isabella. Um, so Bella, this is uh, lovely to meet you. I'm Poe. Uh, oh, <laughs> lovely to meet you as well, Poe. Uh, welcome to my library. It's I was hoping. Collection. Um, <laughs> I was hoping. Do you have any books on? D d what, what were they called? The 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 the. the on keg. Just from behind. On uh, keg. Behind <laughs> the shelf. I've all the shelf. On keg. On keg. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uncake. Uncake. She looks back down to her knitting. Um. Perhaps. Ah, yes. And she starts uh, thumbing through the cards. Uh, almost <laughs> shuffling through them like it's a deck of cards. Pulls one out. <laughs> Flips it over, puts it back in, and keeps thumbing through. Um, this woman and holds is an one artist. Up <laughs> and holds it up <laughs> to the sunlight and looking over. Uh, yes. Um, it's just, uh, I, aisle three. Um, over that way on the left hand side. And, um, a little, uh, spectral hand will drift off from hers, uh, ghostly almost, and it'll gesture to the shelf uh, that she is referencing to. Just just on that shelf there. I believe that's where I put it. Oh. Thank you, thank you very much. I uh, move over to that You're shelf, welcome. and I'll start reading the spines to see if I can figure out which one she's talking about. <laughs> Alright. You start thumbing through these peach-colored spines. Um, you find various titles such as Apple Pie and Strawberry Cobbler, Horticulture for Lizards, um, Grungs Are Our Friends, and then On Cake. <laughs> okay. I, I take the book and I, uh, I, I peer over to Abba and hold the book up and go, go as quietly as I can, but also as loud as I, I can manage in a library. Like, I found it. There's an audible shh from the gnome next to you. He looks up to you. He's very elderly, and he pushes up his glasses. Be very quiet in the library. He just gives you, like, an old person sneer. Okay. He just, like, <laughs> kind of, like, shuffles away, like, apologetically, like, bowing as he walks away from this man. <laughs> Over to Ava. <laughs> I think Ava at this point has a stack of books that she's alphabetizing. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh. Uh, I found the book we're looking for. What are you doing? Uh, oh, the sorting system here was right. We were looking for a book. <laughs> I was sorting her books for her because this system is terrible and I'm having a minor panic attack about it. It it really is quite awful. She didn't really even exactly know where this book was, just what shelf it was on. Oh, dear. Um, I can nope. take a speed read through that book for you if you need. Oh, yes, please. I, I hand it to Ava. Mm -hmm. And she'll do like the thing where she flicks through it a few times and then just finds some important passages and reads those intently. What you can make of this book as the spine just says Onkeg on it. It's thumbing through it seems to be a journal account of somebody's field research of Onkegs. And it is very carefully written, but smeared through age and decay at handwritten passages of somebody's personal observations of Onkeg that ends about 30 to 40 pages into the book. It seems like mm -hmm. an incomplete journal. But you do find passages on with uh, passages with drawings accompanied them, uh, very simplistic ones of on kegs and their various tunneling patterns that they can that they work together to almost web underground. Um, and you find an interesting passage about Onkeg preferring to attack at night because it catches most of their prey off guard and they have better night vision. At least the ones in the local area do. Mm -hmm. As you continue to thumb through it, you can see that they seem to have burrowing mounds that they will... Uh, used to observe prey to seek out weaker targets essentially elderly young sick they don't like too much of a fight being put up with their with their meals or else they can tend to flee and that's all about that you can gather from this small handwritten journal so about all of that happens in about like probably six seconds into Ava's mind just really quickly. So, and she'll hand the book back to Poe. It seems to be a uh, field research note on them. And some major pointers to take is uh, the night ambush predators and uh, they like to have large burrowing mounds and uh, flee easily. Any oh. other books? This was the only one that I found, but I can go back and look. Okay. Um, I can help you look. I think I finished sorting here. It's just, just going to leave a large pile of books on the ground. Where are the others? Where are the others at this moment? Celine? Malfric. Malfric, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Malfric would have just kind of sat at a table and uh, started uh, flipping through his uh, his uh, prayer book. I guess his Bible, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and Celine is boring, bored, ling, unamusedly thumbing through uh, the. The anatomical book. Anatomically okay. correct book. Uh-huh. <laughs> and Kate knows. Um, I would make my way back to the table uh, after a couple minutes of wandering um, the aisles and sit next to Malfrick. Uh I guess I'll, I'll head back to where we found the book. We're going to check the shelves, Abba and I, one last time to make sure I didn't miss mm. any other books before heading back to the table. Okay. Make me one more investigation check. Huh? Do you want to make it or me make it at advantage? You... I could... I'll be spicy. <laughs> All right, you two are looking together 
Pavo, you can roll a advantage. Well, it was a natural one and then a natural 19. So thank God oh, yeah. it was an advantage. <laughs> so with that, it'll be um, 24 for investigation. All right. Thumbing over the books one more time. Despite your thorough searching, it only drives you further mad at how incorrectly and haphazardly organized this place is. But it's almost like a beautiful chaos. Like the colors are pretty neatly lined up. If you knew what a hex code was, it would almost follow that. Um, it's organized chaos is what this library is. It is yeah, the most I said she's an beautifully artist. disgusting library you've ever seen. And you admit defeat on finding anything. It could be in the corner of the room and you could spend hours searching for it and never know where it could be. It could be under a bookshelf for all you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> My favorite part of this is that the librarian knows where everything is. Oh, yeah. Sort of. Eidetic <laughs> memory. No organizational skills. <laughs> yep. Okay. We return to the table with the journal mm -hmm. that we found previously. And say, uh, I, I toss it onto the table defeatedly and say, this is all we could find. And it doesn't have as much information as I would have liked. Well, it's well, a start. Indeed. We're all quite capable. I'm sure that we should be able to deal with some bugs or uh, whatever these creatures are. Well, we did learn that they come out at night, so that might be our best vantage point is to make a stake out and when they come out, get them. At least hmm. that's my thought. Then we shall. It might also be helpful to hunt them during the day, or at least try to get them out during the day. That's also true. a good thought. They may be weaker during the day, but they will probably be in their hive. Hmm. Well, best way to find out is to get there. Shall yeah. we then? Yeah. Alfred might have some pointers as well. Mm, good point. All right. Well, what are you guys doing from here? I think we're heading to the farm, right? Mm -hmm. Do we need right. anything from the market before we leave? I don't think I do, but just throwing it out there. Uh... I'm set. I don't have any money, so let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ava will go over to Celine, who's probably now asleep face down in a book, and just kind of close the book and, like, shake the drool out of it and just pick her up and take her with. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Are you all choosing to walk to the farm along the roads or acquire a carriage? How do you plan to travel? Oh, it was like 20 miles away. Yep. Carriages cost money. I think we're walking. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't. Let me check if I have any money. I have five gold pieces. How much is a carriage? <laughs> um, Inquiring about a carriage at the stables. Um, He does look over your group, counting you up. And uh, he looks at his horses. And... Uh, Oh, for a 20-mile trip, that'll take most of the day. Um, I could do two gold apiece. Well, oh. we're walking. <laughs> it's treacherous territory, and that's why I'm upping the price a little bit. So, ten gold total. Yeah, I think that's more than we have. Thanks anyway, and we're walking away, right? Unless, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> All right, safe travels. And you all begin the weary trek out the archipelago 
uh, towards the farm. With merely a rough direction to go, you travel for about three to four hours along the winding gravel path as it passes through tree lines and mountainsides, eventually reaching the neck of the archipelago that stretches along a small ridge of mountains before coming to the small opening at the last stop in. A place that you are all familiar with being a bit of a novelty to the area, to the, uh, the land of Ironclaw, where people can come get souvenirs without having to ever step in Ironclaw. You can see it's quite bustling around this time as there are many fancy carriages pulling in and out. Seems to be quite a few parties are enjoying their time at this somewhat fanciful resort as it is on the beach line. Um, but you do know that it is quite affordable as their business welcomes uh, walks of all life. And you continue... It's getting to be late afternoon. The sun's starting to go down at this point. It is um, it is in the later autumn months, so it is starting to get cold. Hmm. Okay. If you wanted to push uh, the second half of the journey, you would probably reach the farm about an hour after nightfall roughly eight or nine o'clock yes as long as we don't exert ourselves um I muted. oh no as long as we don't exert ourselves i think probably push on right that should be good and if anything gets too bad at night i have a nice tent for us to stay in yeah okay sure all right All right, as you all continue on trekking along the gravel road, um, now out of the Ironclaw Federation, you come at a crossroads uh, flag post with names of many cities in various directions, some hundreds of miles away um, to the west are signs leading to Port Lake and to the well-known Draconic Kingdom of Dothrak. And to the east is the city of Skaldheim and Vanderport beyond that. As the directions say, you are to travel towards Skaldheim until you reach the clearing in the road that travels up past the Marble Pass a name for an outcropping of crags in the area. And as you continue on, you begin to feel the chill of night start to settle in. The Frigid months are beginning to settle in this part of Galdrea, and with them often comes a heavy snowstorm. And you can feel it nipping at the tips of your fingers, your ears, your noses, and this discomfort really starts to settle in um, to the point of an almost uncomfortable numbness. Uh but you press on for about three hours and you're still just outside the reach of the farm. But it's at this point, if you can choo choose to continue on, that I need everybody to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, I was just going to say to the group, Okay, I'm really tired and I don't want to keep going. It's cold and I'm my legs hurt. Yes, this cold camp. is quite dreadful. Perhaps we should set up for the night, shall we? We can set up yeah, camp I... and I could make a meal for everyone if you like. 
Oh that god, that would lovely. be great. I literally haven't eaten today, so I'm just gonna but she's gonna reach into one of her bags and pull out uh ten like little stones that are just engraved with all these chalk markings and start tossing them in a circle. This is gonna take a minute, so just settle in. And uh she's going to ritual cast uh tiny hut. Ooh. <laughs> Alright. As you spend the 10 minutes ritual casting the tiny hut, drawing your circles on the ground, eventually a small opaque dome appears as if from nowhere. Oh, finally someplace warm, and she'll just kind of sit in it. Ooh, fancy. Uh, can I use my survival skills to look around for, like, some firewood? Yes, you can. I will help out with that. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, that's good because I rolled in that one, one so that would be great to roll with advantage. <laughs> oh, good, a two. Go for it. Uh, plus four, so <laughs> six. <laughs> <laughs> These guys hate me. Dang. Uh, Maya, I don't know, but you are muted. I don't know if you know. Um, okay. As you look around on the beach, Ho and Kaden, next to the roadside, just about the most you can find, although this close to the woods, a lot of it is pretty damp with the sea breeze. And about the driest thing you can find is a small handful of driftwood. It'll suffice, but not for very long. I just need it for cooking, so that should be fine. Yeah, it should be roughly enough, give or take a little. Do you need some help finding some wood? Uh, yes, we're having a harder time with it than expected. Let me see if I can help. Yes, guide on <laughs> <laughs> Uh, What is this roll? Survival. Survival. I only have like a plus one. Okay. Uh, for a natural 20! 20! Oh. It's a blood dice, baby. <laughs> All right. Celine, you take a moment to take in your surroundings. And instead of looking for areas of where you would expect to find dry wood, you know these coastal lines will make just about everything near them damp. So what you instead start looking for is animal tracks. And after some time, you follow a small set of rodent tracks that merge together with two other sets. Picking up on this trail, you follow it back to an old abandoned burrow. And with inside is quite a bundle of sticks that were used in a haphazard pattern to make um, a sustainable nest. And much of the inside of the nest is dry. And as you observe the area, you do um, suspect that this has long since been abandoned. So you collect right. two armfuls of dry uh, twigs. I will collect them and... Go over back to Poe. Oh, thank you. This will this will be great. Yeah, I really want a nice meal. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> I hope you like carrot casserole. I as I start marching back. <laughs> Ava's drooling already. <laughs> it's just Ava and Celine over Poe's shoulder, like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, is there a place inside to build a fire, or is it like a hut, like a like a tent, like? Um, it oh, won't like, make... like it won't like fumigate the tent if you cook inside it. <laughs> if yeah, that's the fire's what you're wondering. fine inside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, stuff can go okay, out well... of it. Nothing can pass into without permission. Gotcha. Okay. Well, then I will start building a little fire pit, 
uh, and pulling out all of the things that I will need from my pack. One of them being Bolin. Oh boy. <laughs> I set him down. I look nervously to the group and I say, I I feel like there is something I should mention. Um, I don't want to scare Dad? any of you. He slowly looks to Bolin. Was that was that Bolin making that noise? You all hear a wet fart sound, as if from Poe's direction. Oh, Poe, come on. No, no, wait, uh, I didn't. Oh. Just got inside. I did, I swear <laughs> that wasn't me. Poe! Listen, if you, need, if you need to use the restroom, I can escort you. No, I, I'm quite fine. Um, what I wanted to mention was this, and I hold up the bowl. Oh. Uh, Malfrick kind of just, like, puts his hand over his mouth. <laughs> you all see Paul holding up a steel bowl with a face drawn on it. <laughs> My, it seems Cute. he's got quite the attitude. Uh, <laughs> uh, I call him Bolin, and uh, he might not want you all to know, but he is a magical artifact that helps me cook. It's funny when they think you're fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of nervously smiles. <laughs> you're all now quite hear? aware that the voice from? came from the bowl. <laughs> oh. oh. You have a talking bowl. Yes. I have a talking bowl. I've heard of singing bowls, but this is really funny. <laughs> uh, Ain't nothing funny about this. I'm all taste and charm. Yes, he's very charming. I like poke <laughs> the bowl. I'm gonna poke it. You can poke it. Ow! My pain receptors. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wow, this is quite fascinating. You I'd poke you back if I had hands. Oh, sorry. What were like, you asking? Do you know what? Like, who made it? I have to be honest, I have no idea. I bought him thinking he was a normal bull, and then he just started talking, and I've slowly just come to accept that. I, I could do a few things to figure out what at least help you figure out a little more if you don't if you don't mind. Uh, I do uh, mind. I wasn't asking you, Bull. Oh my gosh. Excuse you. I have a name, and it's Bull. Abba, 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 if this Bull is cooking us meals, I think we should just you know play along. And for your information, I had a wonderful family. You wait. Did you? Hold on. You, you had a family, Bull. Yes, we were a full set. Me? Oh my god. Oh god. There's more of you. This is the first yeah. time you're mentioning this, Bolin. You see, when a mother mixing bowl and a father mixing bowl love each other very much. A song song. <laughs> <laughs> I zoom tight, old man. He's like but Poe is like red in the face right now and is like, Bolin, <laughs> um I was going to make some casserole. Uh, if you would be so kind. Oh, casserole time! My favorite. I've got, I've got a new um, an ingredient I want to try. I think it'll really oh. spice things up. I, I would really just rather stick to the, to the recipe that you and I both know. No, 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 no! I'm, I swear upon it this time. It's called coriander. Oh. <laughs> I don't, I don't know how that would taste. I. Who's the professional here? He's not gonna, like, poison us, is he? You know, he's only done that, like, a few times. Nah, those oh. people didn't have refined taste. Oh. Hey, my taste is pretty refined. <laughs> Does Bolin need to make a persuasion check? <laughs> Alright, we're doing the persuasion roll, okay. <laughs> yeah. Who's taking charge? 
Is it against me? Because I'm the one cooking? Yes. Since you're cooking, okay. a bowl one. It happens every time you want to cook. Yep. So, bowling got a nine. Okay. Uh, and now you persuasion. roll for persuasion. Persuasion for me. Oh, thank God I'm proficient. That is an 18. <gasps> all right, all right, fine. You win this time. But I swear, okay. coriander is the key. It adds a nice spice. All right. I I just kind of pat him and I start making my carrot casserole. All right. And you do so. Over the next 10 minutes, you create a beautiful wafting carrot casserole that fills the enclosure of the t Liamman's tiny hut, Ava's tiny hut, with a yeah. fragrant ca carrot uh, deliciousness. Oh, it smells so divine in here. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. So I, I just, I serve it up and I say, uh, go, go, go ahead. Help yourselves. I just, like, use my hands, and I just eat it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I have utensil. He's, like, pulling out, like, plates right now, to, like, and he just turns and sees you and kind of, like, smiles and sets them down. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. I would love Quite a fork and plate, Poe. Hmm? I would love a fork and plate, Poe. I hand one off to you. There you are. Uh, yeah, I just start serving everybody up and handing them mm. their meals. This shit's amazing. Um, for those of you who are eating, this is kind of useless because we're going to bed anyway, but we get dark vision for eight hours. Oh. Cool. Oh. <laughs> Dope as hell. I could see it clear for some reason. <laughs> it's the carrots, I know it is. <laughs> <laughs> I do help your vision. Mm -hmm. That uh, might be handy for when we deal with the uh, onkex. True. Yes. True. I we, like, had the same thought. Put this in a sexual for later. Yes, actually, I I could definitely do that. I I take the leftovers and I will put them in my satchel. Oh yes. <laughs> we have right. to eat them immediately. <laughs> we have to eat it immediately after we're done with. <laughs> after I pull this out. Just so you all oh, know. Oh, right, yeah. Or else it goes bad. Oh. Yeah. That's not a problem for me. <laughs> um, so, Poe, now that we're done cooking and everything, do you mind if I take a look at... What was your name again? I was saying to the bull. <laughs> Silent hey. treatment from Bolin. Oh, there it oh. is. <laughs> uh, my name's Bolin. Did you forget it already? How could you? Oh, I'm Bolin. Bolin. I'm a master chef. <clears throat> uh, Noted. Uh, he goes, well, um, you know, I wouldn't feel right if Bolin didn't feel comfortable with it, uh, making him. But, uh, I don't, what do you think, Bolin? Are you willing? I got nothing to hide. Okay. Uh, he uh, hands Bolin off to Ava. She'll just quickly set him on the ground and start uh, drawing kind of this bright blue chalk circle around him, and it's going to ritual cast Identify on Bolin. <laughs> All right. Um, you take 10 minutes doing that. <laughs> What's everybody else doing during that time? Just watching? <laughs> I'm just going to start setting up bed rolls. Okay. I'm cleaning my gun and watching the spectacle. Alfred is going to do his nightly prayer. Oh. Aw. Set up my bed roll and uh, watch the Bolin uh, Ava coolness going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you complete your ritual casting of Identify. And as you complete the chalk circle and finish your incantation, 
Do you have a pearl? Um, worth 100 gold pieces in value? Well, I don't have the pearl, but I have something else I can use. As you all watch uh, uh, Ava, mid-ritual, uh, stab her hand very violently. Oh! Oh. Uh, Ava? Oh no, it's fine. And she's going to take, uh, 46 damage. <laughs> you all watch as the blood, as it drips to the ground, um, begins to spread out and cover the chalk lines, turning the blue glow of the ritual casting to a vibrant ruby red as it glows and the incantation is complete and the spell is cast. Fuck. She's just whispering, just swears to herself as she uh, wraps up her hand very gently. And let's see what you are. <laughs> what do I discern about this book? Not book, bowl. You discern that Bolin is a sentient bowl, a mind infused with a mixing bowl, a bowl that is... It, it, you just figured out that it's a sentient bowl, I think. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah, it's a sentient bowl that, when cooked in at the beginning of each day, is capable of creating a number of different flavors that it can prepare uh, special meals in. It prepares these special meals and gives a very generous mechanical boost to whoever consumes the meals. It comes in a variety of extra spices that Bolin or the... Uh, the cook using Bolin can determine, though if it's Bolin, he tends to get a little liberal with his spices. And it comes in variety of preparedness, such as crunchy, fluffy, sour, sweet, savory, or even, um, I believe, yeah, I believe the last, no, what was the last one? Oh, mommy. I can't remember. Oh, it comes in many <laughs> different flavors. I might be forgetting one. But it comes in savory? various different flavors. Ooh, yes, mommy. savory is one of them. Are you saying mummy like, like no, the like, wrapped up? Like umami. Umami. Oh, okay. Umami. Umami. Hmm. I was just picturing <laughs> eating like dead people jerky. Oh. Like, oh. <laughs> 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 Fell towards special. <laughs> yeah, Alba's just gonna unclamp uh, her gauntlet onto the ground, and on the inside you see a fully stocked healer's kit, and she's gonna begin slowly sewing up her hand, and just looking at the bowl going, So you're a talking spice rack. Do I look like I got shelves? Who's the one with the eyes here? Do you... What? No, I drew that face on him. He doesn't have eyes. He just likes to oh. talk about it like that. I am omnipotent. Fear me, I'm okay. a mixing ball. I just oh slowly God. take him and start cramming him back into my backpack. <laughs> You'll never do Good night, Bolin. <laughs> I have so many questions. Yeah. I, I too have questions. What did you see, Ava? Not much. It's just kind of, he's a very overzealous cook in a bowl who just spices things up for you. So yeah, probably not spice. much more than you know. Well, I, about my experience with him, aside from the time that he uh, tried to poison my husband, but uh, we were fine. You ha how long have you had this bowl? Mm, uh, about two years. I like look at my own weapon and whisper to myself, like, oh, I swear to God, if you start talking, <laughs> I'm gonna throw you away. <laughs> <laughs> Mm 
Um, well, I'm going to set up my bed and go to sleep because I have a wound to sleep off now. Can we uh, can we talk about that? What the heck was that? Yeah, what? are you okay? Just oh, no, I'm fine. Yourself. It's... She, she's going to, like, hide her face behind a pillow a little bit and just, you know, it's just, um... You know, my dad's research and everything, we, uh... You know, the Sanguine Church and all of their holy rituals, just taking it apart a bit more, and we found ways to uh, make blood uh, better for spell casting, so you don't have to take so much out of pocket, but it hurts a fuck ton. But it, so, it, it's fine. It's fine. So you're using it as a conduit? Yeah. Basically. It's... Well... Just, I guess, That's what... just be careful. No, yeah, I have lots of experience, and she'll kind of push back uh, a cloak that she's been wearing, and just her whole left arm is just covered in really large scars. Oh, man. Uh, oh. Lots of practice. Well, I, for one, have always been a great advocate of you and your, your father's work. I found it quite inspired. And um, Malfric will walk over and cast Cure Wounds on um, Ava. And As you do close. so... Uh, Nine HP, no? It staunches the blood flow, but the wound does not seal. Hmm. Whoa. Yeah, that's why I have to use the kit to stop a lot of things. Hmm. Oh, I just have well. to give my body time. Just, uh, just make sure it doesn't get disinfected. Oh, yeah. I, 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 I've done this tons of times before. I know, I know. It's just, it's, it's been fine. a while since I've seen you and you just stab yourself. It's kind of, it's kind of a shock. A little bit. Yeah. Sorry for not doing much earlier today. I was kind of freaked out about the dwarf trying to, I don't know, poison oh, me to death with his breath. Right. He's an asshole. He's just, you know, oh. unpredictable. But hey, I brought us all together, and I think that's pretty nice. <laughs> well, I'm going to hit the hay. Yeah. Not a bad idea. I climb into my bedroll as well. Sleepy time junction. Yeah. Sleepy time. Should we, time. Should we take watch or are we... we we're yeah, safe in here, right? Yeah. Oh, I just was gonna go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Well, this should be completely fine in here. Okay. If you say so. I... I trust Ava and I I go to sleep. All right. As you all begin settling down, Ava, you've cast the dome a hundred times before. Do you do anything to camouflage the outside of it as you are capable of changing its opaque color? Yeah, just enough to like match the general color of like surrounding stones and stuff. Okay. An easy grayish camouflage pattern. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Is anybody taking watch? I think we established that we don't need to. Yeah, no. I know. Okay. So. Just sleeping. All right. <laughs> My favorite sound. Okay. As you all drift off to sleep, dreams come to each of you, some of home, some of journeys yet to come, and some of underlying missions, secret wants, desires, and needs. 
quest that you're embarking on with new companions. Ones that are going to see you possibly fall to your knees in a final moment of triumph or continue on an eternal adventurer ever walking Baldrea looking for the next the next job the next coin the next meal the next discovery as this unlikely band of adventurers comes together wanting to tackle their first job tomorrow as a new crew and as a new party the sun slowly begins to rise on the Galdrian coastline and with it comes a ray of hope as you all begin to wake from your slumber and that's where we're going to call tonight's session nice Ooh. thanks oh DM this was so fun. You're welcome. This yeah. was a lot of fun. Yeah. I'm so excited. This is anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was great. A lot of really good role play. That was really fun, a lot guys. Of good yeah. I love everybody's characters. I know. It's thank so good. Azure Order, oh. thank you for gifting three tier one subs. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, uh, aw, how lovely. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Dude, I love. I love the dynamic between uh, Malfric and Ava. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so good. It's so funny. I have no idea why Ava would be scared of Malfric. It's not a clue. <laughs> no idea. Not a clue. Uh, I think uh, my favorite part of the session has to be Poe with the crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> I panicked. <laughs> I literally was so had funny. nothing else that I could do. I was just like, I guess I'll just shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for everyone's like characters and backstories. Mm -hmm. yeah. The dynamic the is very begins. fun so far. Yeah. Uh I gotta I gotta work on my word stumbling. <laughs> I guess fine. Yeah, yeah, just continue uh, on. We got this. First first session anxieties. But this has been yeah. a lot of fun. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you, my beautiful cast, for embarking on this journey with me. I know it's been a long time coming for a lot of us, and I'm finally excited to see it take off. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, hope to see you all next Tuesday. Good night. Oh, yeah. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.